Did you ever seek therapy for uh, some of the stuff that you talked about? Yes, I have been to many different kinds of therapy. I've been in and out of therapy for most of my life. What I've gotten out of it is that with complex PTSD, talk therapy doesn't really work because you're just reliving those moments. It's really not effective. And you have to learn other coping mechanisms and other skills. Yeah, of course. I'm always open to getting help. I'm excited to be back. So far, I would say... Hmm. Hold on a second. How's this? I think it's better. Moving on. This is now the third iteration of I Have No Idea TV. And so far, it's... I think it's going pretty well. I do have to admit, though, it's actually a lot more challenging than I thought. I got some great feedback so far. I'm really glad that a lot of you are on board with this project and are open to hearing these stories, while others, of course, gave me some really great critical input as well. I'm certainly taking everything into great consideration. I mean, I've known you for a long time, and I think that you've gone through a lot of changes. When I met you, we lived in Chicago, you were doing weddings, then you stopped doing weddings, we ran a company together, then you know we drove a limo together, then you moved to LA, we've been to Burning Man, like, you know, we lived together, then you were hustling, selling cars, then you stopped doing it, then you started pursuing a photo project. You know what it is? It feels like that when you're at the end of something, and the end of something usually signals the beginning of something else beginning of something else. Yes, I'm hoping that this, this right here is that very beginning of something else. I would say most recently, I've been having a really tough time with work. For one reason or another, all the different projects I had lined up one by one, just for some reason either got canceled or rescheduled indefinitely and this sort of thing happens it's sort of the nature of the business of course but then when this begins to occur one by one project after project certainly put me into a rather unforeseen circumstance and it's been tough in the process to just sustain life i think there's only one purpose it's not the purpose of buying your fourth ferrari and maserati it is helping others being there for others being there for society the moment we discover that purpose and how we can manage to do that, that is the solution. Not only the solution of the, of the, of the shithole we are in. I mean, I don't know how much you paid uh, rent, for example, but most people pay exorbitant amounts of rent. 80, 90% of their income goes off to a roof over their head. That's not livable. The simple reality is I'm having a difficult time working within the construct to produce any kind of wealth. They run after the money and because that's the new god and that's what they respect. And by wealth I don't mean excess here. Uh, I mean just being able to live comfortably enough where you don't have to worry about the basics. I guess that's not really wealth, that's just basic living. I guess I'm just having a challenge with basic living, you know? Well, failure in my sense is not like a global failure. I mean, if something didn't work, then as an engineer, I would just refocus the energy elsewhere and then come back to the same question again and then try it from different approach. That's how I kind of work it out. I don't consider a failure. And then you close the box and you never come back to the subject ever. It's the system. I'm having trouble with the system. The whole monetary system is just not something that I jive with very well. Money is just not something that I've really cared about. It's not something I've focused on amassing. I've always had enough to have the things that I need and just enough to have the sort of freedom that I prefer. I think the biggest gimmick is the American dream or really just any kind of capitalistic view of success and what we need to be successful and to be worthy, valuable people. I think capitalism has really made us all hate ourselves, fucking magnify all of our flaws, 
and then give away all of our time and energy trying to fit into a society that we would be happier if we just didn't care about any of those rules. Like at Burning Man, when you're like, oh, radical self-expression, you can be whoever you want and whatever you feel like. The collapse already has started worldwide, it's not only the US, and the economic system as we know it, that has about 15 years remaining. After that, we will see a new world with hopefully a much lesser population. In general, I guess, I'm just not very good at the whole financial aspect of life. Something for me to work on. My whole life, actually, I've never, I've, I've never really been competitive. I've never had this mindset to where I'm the best at something or I have the most of something. To me, instead, uh, freedom and time has always been more valuable than having certain belongings or stature of some sort. In whatever capacity, I'd love to see like somehow less competition between like people. I, I know it's probably never going to happen. And it's like a lot of people think that comp competition is like super valuable to progress. I personally think it's like super detrimental and completely just fucking useless. Maybe I just like never had this like killer instincts. I have to win. I have to beat this person. Mine's better than yours. It just doesn't seem to me like ultimately a very thriving environment for human beings to compete. The facade of, of, of an image, I think that's the biggest gimmick, that just what the image is, that's all that it is. That's the biggest gimmick. Something will reduce the uh, human population because we have proven not to be aware enough to take care neither of this planet, nor of ourselves, nor for the animals. So we need to make place. But I do believe personally, and well, it's more of a knowing, if anything, that this is a simulation. Whether or not people agree with me. That's just sort of been the story of the past few months. And with inflation and my bills certainly not going away, uh, expenses actually going up in the process. I had to make some sacrifices. I, I started to essentially liquidate the, all the things that, uh, that I could to compensate for the funds not earned. Camera gear, things that I wasn't using, things that weren't absolutely essential to me, I ended up getting rid of, and that, that sort of still wasn't enough. You have to push through the uncomfortability to, to, to get to places that will give you new awareness, new gifts of, uh, of being than if you just stayed afraid and not taking new chances and t taking new leaps. <sighs> After 10 years of owning my motorcycle, which is something that is very, very dear to me. Those of you who own motorcycles, especially for a long time, you, you, you out there, you understand. You grow a certain bond with this incredible machine because you go through things together and I'm not gonna preach on that now. This is the only asset that I could liquidate that I had left. I, obviously, I didn't want to do this, but I had no other choice. In the beginning, of course, I, I ended up listing it for uh, a completely unreasonable amount just because it was more like, you know, wishful thinking. I, I was sort of trying to manifest the best outcome since I'm parting with something that is so dear to me. The actual value of the motorcycle is somewhere within the $5,000 range. But I ended up listing it for nine, you know, because anything is possible. Of course, nobody cared, nobody even inquired about it. And as reality set in, bills were piling up. So I reduced the price to 6,000. I'm open to offers, 6,000, yeah. Well, I'll get 6,000 for it, right? Come on, 6,000 for this thing? You pay 6,000 for it. 6K, no cigar. I just ended up posting it on eBay with no reserve. I included very, very, very thorough information on any and every aspect of the motorcycle that one could ever want to know about, as well as an obscene amount of pictures and video. No one cares, but I wanted to do this bike justice. 
Eventually, it got up to $3,050. whoop de doo There was still a couple of days left in the auction, and I know that most of the time, you know, the prices, they bump up last second. Here I am, last day, last minute, countdown is on, sitting in front of my computer in hopes just praying, just praying that please, please, somebody come in and help make this not so bitter. I have a very challenging relationship with money, as most people do. I think it's just something that I really dislike thinking about, but we're kind of forced to. Whether you have a lot of it or you don't have a lot of it, or like how to manage it, or you know where to get it, who to give it to, how to spend it. It just feels like a, a problem that just like never gets a resolution. Like no matter, no matter how much of it you have. I mean, it's not necessarily always bad. It's just, it's just challenging. Believe it or not, the buyer of my motorcycle is actually in Mongolia. He arranged for his friends and a shipping company to come and pick up the motorcycle from me. Oh, this is a historic moment for me. Oh, okay, yeah. Goodbye, buddy. This was the day after 10 long, incredible, rewarding years. I couldn't give it up in, the, in this condition. It was sitting under the covers got a little dirty. I ended up just having to wash it one last time, which is actually a completely ridiculous uh, thing to do, considering the fact that it's gonna be loaded into a container and then shipped to Mongolia. By the time it makes it there, it's gonna be so much dirtier than it was when it got picked up here. I said, thank you for not killing me. Success and failure is just like a weird concept for us. It's like such a artificial concept that is kind of instilled in us over years and years and years of competition and school, work, the monetary system. It's like such a learned concept, I think, of success and failure. From culture to culture, success and failure may be different most valuable the moment <laughs> you don't know if you have the next just even getting up in the morning to me is, is pretty valuable it's like oh i have a new opportunity to to do something to create something to make something yeah that's definitely the most valuable for me at, at the moment <laughs> it's really hard for me to just be present and just like enjoy like this room and this moment and whatever I'm doing. I'm always trying to feel better. To continue growing, to grow, not never stop, never stop evolving. Uh, always find new subjects, learning something and growing. That's uh, the most valuable thing. And in the moment you stop learning that's where you get into this stagnation zone and that's where i become very irritative and uh, upset but if you continuously growing and learning something new that's that sort of brings the meaning since i was in liquidation mode annie decided to join the process and she actually made me a very lucrative offer she said uh, you know i got a bunch of stuff that i'd like to sell it's, it has some real value and uh, i'd like to essentially just get rid of it and I'll give you half of everything I collect. Sounds amazing, right? It sounded amazing to me. I, I was on board, of course. She knew the situation I was in and this was her way of helping and at the same time liberating herself of a bunch of stuff that she doesn't need and also getting a little bit of money. I think it was a total of 11 different uh, winter jackets. Selling winter jackets in the summer is, is, is a fantastic idea. Of course it is. We still decided to try it and essentially posted them all over the place as well. You name it. Offer up, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Poshmart, Debop, everywhere. And after reposting them week after week, we ended up selling a whopping zero coats. In the process, I still have to survive. I'm depleting said funds pretty quickly and 
hustling to find new opportunity. Remember, because when we're over there, we are going to be in a world with no material, with no hands, nothing we can touch. We cannot make uh, recordings or paint or write books. We cannot do anything. We're going to exist. Our spirit's gonna be there, but we're going to stand in line to come back here. It's an extreme blessing to be materialized and being in a human body. It doesn't matter how shitty the circumstances are and that we cannot pay our rent. But here we can create things, which over there we cannot. We just, we just are a field of energy. But the silver lining here is that all of these cancellations and seemingly unpleasant circumstances actually led me here, uh, gave me the opportunity to create this. This project has given me some real drive and some real purpose. Maybe this will bring me some sort of opportunity. I'm certainly hoping so.